So guys, we are making a clarification video on Trials of Osiris. It was brought to my attention yesterday that there are a number of new players or returning players that just forgot how Trials works, especially with the Passage of Persistence being a new passage in Destiny, which many people are still stating is not working for them and not giving them their adept weapon, which we're going to talk about in detail, and the Passage of Ferocity, which has been reworked with Update 7.3.5. Now, we've done Trials guides in the past, but they're pretty much outdated at this point. But if you're already already a reoccurring trials player, then there's probably not a whole lot you're going to learn from this. But what I will say for all of my trials players, whether you're new or old, the loot that is dropping this season, more specifically, the Prophet Scout rifle and the Summoner auto rifle has never been more important than they are now. That's because in the TWAB here recently, Bungie announced that starting in the final shape, the traits on both of those weapons will be enhanceable. Meaning if you have the God Roll Summoner auto rifle adept, I mean, it's a five out of five God Roll and it's got everything Thing you want fellas in the final shape it's gonna get even better which is why i'm really urging all of my players even my pve players to give trials a go this season with that being said let's go over the mechanics of trials how it works its passages and also just a few tips now to start things out Trials of Osiris is a 3v3 player versus player game mode that takes place nearly every weekend from Friday at reset until the next Tuesday for the weekly reset. The only times you won't find Trials active is if Iron Banner is live or if a raid releases or it's very early in the launch of an expansion. Now, PvP is a free-to-play activity, but a decision was made a few years back that the most recent DLC is required in order to gain access. So currently right now, if you want to play Trials of Osiris, you will need Lightfall. And then starting in June, you will need the final shape. Before you jump up and say, Cross, what in the pay to win is that? Keep in mind, cheaters were the main reason why this paywall was put in place. It's one of the few things that actually deters cheaters. Now, what Trials of Osiris offers is exclusive rewards that are only found in Trials. Also access to adept weapons and mods outside of Grandmaster Nightfalls and Master Rates, as well as other exclusive rewards and cosmetics for reaching the lighthouse. I get so many people asking me all the time, Cross, where did you get that ship? I got it from the lighthouse. And yeah, it's sexy. And essentially, you can make it to the lighthouse if, as a Trials player, you win seven straight games without any losses. Sound daunting? Look, it's definitely not an easy task. And if you go flawless, I don't care who you are, you should be proud of yourself. It is not an easy achievement. But with the most recent update in Destiny, I would say going flawless has never been more manageable than it is now. But keep in mind, it can still be sweaty as hell. Whether you're a solo player or playing with a team, dude, we have all been there. We have had multiple losing streaks. It happens. But somewhere along the way, guys, you're going to start seeing it. You're going to start finding success, perhaps not in entire games, but in individual rounds and before you know it, you're getting closer and closer to Flawless. Now, if you're completely new to Trials, in order to gain access to the activity, you will need to complete the introductory quest called Trials Access, which can be picked up from Saint 14. Now, this quest is pretty straightforward. You need to complete your competitive placement series, which is seven games. Then you need to get 50 kills in competitive and then increase your power level to the season soft gap. You're probably wondering, Cross, why the hell do I have to do all these things? Well, you know, I mentioned earlier about cheaters. Well, you can't just put a paywall there. You got to put other walls. This is another one of those walls. Luckily, though, we have not seen a power increase since Lifefall. And the soft cap right now is 1770 power. Now, your power level is important inside of Trials. If you're running in there with low-level gear and you're getting wrecked, that's why. Trials is the only Destiny 2 PvP mode where power matters. And the lower your power level is, the less damage you'll be dealing, and also the more damage you'll be taking. Now, personally, guys, even though the soft cap is 1770, I would not attempt Trials until 1800. Now, once that part of the quest is finished, Sam will ask you to return to him and acquire a Trials Passage to begin playing. Now, once you've played one game, won a round, and eliminated an opponent, you can then return to Saint in order to finish the quest, and he'll reward you with a weapon. Happen. And this takes us to how does Trials work? As mentioned, this features a 3v3 PvP game mode called Dominion. Again, it's not Elim, it's now Dominion. The rules of Dominion are pretty simple. You can either eliminate the three guardians opposing you, or you can capture a zone that appears at the start of every round. Now, Dominion does not allow for respawning, but you can revive your teammates, at least after a short cooldown, which is really nice because this benefits exotics that actually give you benefits for reviving your teammates. 
benefits. For instance, precious scars. Then there's also a modifier that is only active for trials and the competitive playlist called Not Swap, where if you swap your exotic armor at any point during the game, it will drain all ability energy. Now keep in mind, you can swap your weapons, just don't swap your subclass or your armor as it will drain all of your ability energy. Now the first team to reach five rounds one wins that game of trials. And the ultimate goal of trials is to win seven straight games on your trials passage without losing, which takes us to that daunting task. Despite it being a behemoth to get seven wins, there are multiple passages that can help you in this endeavor. First, we have Passage of Mercy. This forgives one loss per run. But Bungie actually updated it not that long ago where it actually will forgive a second loss if you have not been flawless for that week. This is probably the most common passage you'll see, especially at the beginning of the weekend, as this allows you to lose two games, but still go flawless if you secure those seven wins. We also have the Passage of Wealth. This gives you increased trials reputation from match wins, which can help you rank up at Saint-14 even faster. We've got Passage of Confidence, which grants bonus rewards from the flawless chest at the lighthouse. Again, a bold passage, hence the name Passage of Confidence. Then with update 7.3.5, we received a brand new passage and a rework to an old one. Now, Passage of Ferocity is what we've had previously, which now reads that if you have not gone flawless this week, losses after three wins reset you back to three wins. What this means, guys, is that as long as you can get to three wins, your journey will not start from one to seven, but instead from four to seven. Now, I know that's easier said than done, but this is a great way to guarantee a flawless as long as you can win those first three games. Now, now, would it suck if you're on game six or seven and you lose? Yes. But instead of being reset all the way back down to zero, you're just reset back down to three and you'll be able to start on game four with the passage that is still flawless. Now, whether or not this is better than Mercy really just depends on you. If you've got a solid enough team, then maybe you want to attempt your try with Mercy. But if you're playing solo, then perhaps Passage of Ferocity is the one you should go for. But this takes us to Passage of Persistence. This reads that losses following a win removes the win from the card and reaching seven wins rewards the weekly adept weapon now reaching seven wins without having a win removed will grant you access to the lighthouse this is essentially getting seven wins no losses therefore it is a flawless run but at any point in the card you do lose then you do not get access to the lighthouse now the reason why passage of persistence is so good is that you're guaranteed an adept weapon when you reach seven wins guys you can have a hundred losses but it doesn't matter because as long as you have seven wins, you will get an adept weapon. Now, granted, every time you lose, you do remove a win. But if you lose two games in a row, you don't remove two wins. You simply just remove that one. Bundy described this passage as a trailing backstop. Once you have at least one win recorded on the passage, a loss will remove the most recent win instead of flowing it. And since consecutive losses will not remove additional wins, winning two games in a row adds a permanent win to the card, with win streaks longer than two adding additional permanent wins. Now, look, let me just say a lot of people have been confused about Passage of Persistence. I've used it multiple times and I've had different scenarios in which my card has become flawed. First up, this passage allows you to continually persist until you get seven wins. And every time you lose, it simply removes the previous win. Now, if you lose twice or three times in a row, no concern, it only removes one win. Here's where the issue is with Passage of Persistence. If you have played with this passage and have found yourself getting to seven wins, but somehow, some way, your card has become flawed and you do not get an adept drop. It's because either A, you started your card off with a loss. If you lose right out the gate, like every passage, you're going to have to reset. Passage of Persistence is no different. Now, here's the other thing. If you win one game and you've got to win, but then suddenly you lose two games in a row, your passage then becomes flawed. Now, listen, I don't know if this is intentional or not. I would like to believe that it isn't, but it's almost as if the passage doesn't realize that, hey, you're operating with one win in the chamber and instead just flaws out your passage as if you have a fresh passage. So what do you do if you lose two games in a row after winning your first game? Unfortunately, guys, you have to completely reset. So to really get this passage going, you have to win those first two games. And then you can begin your hopscotching process of getting to seven wins. And listen, the way you progress here is as long as you're winning two games out of every three, you'll continually keep progressing by one. Now, the other side of things is that if you error code or if you leave a game early, then of course, this will flaw your passage. But keep in mind, if your PC or something crashes, what you always want to do is just Alt F4, load up Destiny again, and it will put 
put you right back in the trials game that you just got kicked out of if the trials game is still going and it will save your passage it actually saved it for me now can you go flawless with passage of persistence you can if you get seven wins in a row no losses now you won't get the adept drop i actually did it but the adept drop didn't drop on me because it was waiting for me at the lighthouse so if you do this and you're like oh my god i just won seven games in a row where the hell's my stuff bungie see if you can't load into the lighthouse and then you can go loot your adept amongst other rewards now can you continue farming for adept weapons with the passage of persistence yeah because you did get flawless with this passage like any other passage that you've gone flawless with if you hang on to that passage guys you can in fact continue playing trials and on wins an adept drop will drop for you but keep in mind the passage of persistence cannot be used to focus an adept drop it literally says it right there in the card and it's non-existent when you go there to saint 14 even if you did go flawless with persistence you still cannot redeem it for another adept drop with saints you see guys if you go flawless with any of the other passages you can then go back to saint 14 and you can spin that passage amongst other currencies and you can actually give yourself another adept weapon keep in mind once you do so this means you have to get another passage if you play trials which means you start back off at no wins and the reason why that hurts especially if you've gone flawless for the weekend if you have gone flawless you want to keep that passage all the way until reset on tuesday and you want to keep playing trials guys because every time you do win a trials game there's a chance for an adept weapon to drop and i find the drop rates to be really good like three and four games i'm getting an adept to drop for me and that's how bundy keeps us playing trials for even longer now i'm going to bring up the trials matchmaking parameters if you're a destiny one player you're probably used to card based matchmaking meaning somebody had three wins is going to match you against somebody else around those same amount of wins and back in destiny one if you were on flawless game like the final game you were matching someone else who was also on flawless game so that final game was always the sweatiest i want to mention that that is not the case here trials is fire team based matchmaking only and it's actually like a hybrid system but you are not matching people with the same amount of wins you have now trials is split into three cues trios duos and solos in trios that being you playing as a trio you'll be playing other teams of three in duos you'll always have one person as a solo and normally you're always going to be playing against someone else who is also a duo and a solo with them and if you're queuing as a solo player you'll be either getting matched up with all solos or you'll be on a team with a duo now bungie went through all of this in previous twops essentially stating why this was the best matchmaking system amongst everything they've tried before and i actually think it is good because despite how hard trials may be for my solo players right now let me just say way back before this matchmaking change it was way harder damn near impossible because you were constantly getting matched up against teams of three who would just run through you and other solo players and there's also two different matchmaking pools for trials the first being the practice pool which features stop and farming protection this pool is based on connection and weekly performance essentially how well you have done for trials this week and it resets every single week now only players with a flawed card or players that are on their first game of the week play in this pool now don't worry there's no way around this everyone in your fire team must have either a flawed card or be on their first game of the week in order to be placed in the practice pool then we have the challenger pool now this is where most people who are attempting to go flawless for the week will end up this pool matches based solely on connection guys i repeat there are no matchmaking based on tickets as in wins on your court now weekly wins or skill-based matchmaking this is purely connection based matchmaking now look does that mean you're never going to get somebody that's lagging absolutely not this is destiny man but i will say i rarely do come across people that are lacking it was a much bigger issue back in d1 not so much here in d2 now now, players who have any card with no losses including a card after reset or those playing with someone in their fire team that has a card with no losses will be placed in this pool now now i'm talking about the matchmaking in detail but the reason why i bring this up is because yes you can be on game two with only one win on your card and suddenly find yourself playing against someone who's going for flawless and that's just the way it is guys and honestly the system is much better than what it was back in d1 because in d1 that flawless game was so sweaty because the other opposing team 
team was always playing for their flawless. Normally, there were times where the parameters would relax, but nine times out of 10, it was someone who was also trying to go flawless, which means they were obviously good enough to be in that position to go flawless. And secondly, they were about to go for it. Now let's talk about the line house. This is our exclusive location for PVP players that you can visit once you've gone flawless. This takes place on Mercury. And really there's not a lot here, just a chess. You got Saint 14 congratulating you with this long speech, but each chess will grant you the weekly adept ward, as well as another trials ward, that being either a weapon or piece of armor. You can also earn trials mementos here. Keep in mind, you can only hold one at a time. And it also gives you other rewards, such as Ascendant Shards, Adept Mods, and exclusive cosmetic rewards like ships, shaders, sparrows, and ghost shells. There's even an exclusive emblem for those that have gone flawless without ever trailing a game in that card. That literally means you're dominating from start to finish. Now, once you've gone flawless, you have two options. You can either focus your card at Saint along with one Trials Ingram and 50,000 Glimmer in order to get another roll of the weekly adept weapon. But this also brings up to what I suggested earlier. You need to keep playing, guys. You see, once you've gone flawless, this is when the rewards get even more plentiful. Because if you continue to win games, that weekly adept weapon has a chance to drop for you as a normal post-game drop. Now, if you lose four or five games, it's all right. It's not like that's going to remove your chance of getting an adept weapon. You won't get it for those losses. But if you win after losing those four or five games, that win has the potential chance to drop that adept weapon. Now, you also get other normal drops as you play trials, from weekly weapons to armor drops to ingrams and other the materials but if you're purely trying to get the most adept weapons possible that's why i said earlier passage of ferocity may be your best choice yes persistence will net you that guarantee adept weapon but if you can make it to three wins with ferocity or you can take advantage of passage of mercy and make it to seven wins without getting more than two losses that right there guys is the best way to put you in the run to getting a boatload of adept drops now once you get to monday or even tuesday preferably monday though because Tuesday, we normally have downtime and an update. So I highly recommend doing this either at the end of the weekend or Monday. But you take that passage that you went flawless on. You then go to Saint 14 and you turn it in for one more adept drop. Now, with all that being said, going flawless still is not an easy task for everyone. But you really don't need the adept version of these weapons, guys. If you're comparing two five out of five god rolls, then yes, the adept version is better as it increases your stats. And of course, you have adept mods. But notice what Bungie said in the most recent twop. These weapons, like the Prophet Scout Rifle and the Summoner Auto Rifle, will have perks that are enhanceable retroactively. They didn't say just the adept versions of these weapons. They mean just the base version. So guys, even if you do just get the base version of these guns, that's okay. It's better to just get the 5 out of 5 god roll, with it being the base version, rather than a 3 out of 5, or even a 4 out of 5 god roll on the adept version. By the way, if you're interested in knowing what are the god rolls for the Prophet Scout Rifle and the Summoner Auto rifle feel free to check out our review nowadays though i find trials is fairly generous in terms of rewards when you win games you have a 50 percent chance of getting one weekly trials weapons to drop and there's different tiers of rewards based on the amount of wins you get before your card becomes flawed three wins will grant you trials armor four wins will grant you five enhancement cores five wins will give you a trials weapon and six wins will grant you three enhancement prisms on top of all that winning games will also randomly reward you with trials gear in Ingram's already. Now, for my folks that are wanting to team up with two other friends, in update 7.3.5, Bungie changes so that three-man fire teams, by simply just completing matches, not even getting wins, has an additional 50% chance to drop the weekly weapon, a 50% chance to receive a Trials Ingram, and additional Trials reputation. So again, guys, even if you don't go flawless, in my opinion, Trials has never been more rewarding. And just getting a good roll on some of these weapons is more than enough. You think I'm going to look at less and say less? Why do you have a 5 out of 5 cataphract that's not adept? Get off my rating. No. That doesn't matter. No one's going to say that. There are many weapons inside of Trials that are just as good in their base version. But the only thing Adepts have is, of course, the ability to apply Adept mods, and they have a different shade of paint. But that's pretty much it. Now, as far as how to be better in Trials of Osiris. Oh, boy. Guys, my tip for Trials, 
And this is not me trying to get you to come watch our stream. But I used to do this myself back in Destiny 1. That's just watching people at least on Friday. You don't have to watch the entire day either. But just kind of see what is working and what's not. Now, obviously, everybody's play style is a little different. But you can come by the stream, see where we're rocking. And if I'm like, oh my gosh, Jade Rabbit is popping this weekend. Fellas, I'm able to get so many angles with it. It's disgusting. Well, guys, I don't know. If you're a Scout Rifle fan, you may want to try Jade Rabbit. As far as what the meta is, because of the ammo economy changes, which are applicable throughout all of Crucible, you cannot use your special ammo as readily as you were before. Before, it would be two people meeting in the middle with sniper rifles and everybody would be just going for the pick or folks would just be spamming their conditional finalities. But now you can't do that. You may be able to do that the first round, but you have to get kills and assists and do other things to accumulate more special ammo. And this also means part of the chess match inside of Trials is being more intentional with your special weapons. I think special weapons are still very good. Can you rock double primary? Absolutely. I did double primary literally all last weekend. However, this weekend on Cauldron, I was rocking conditional finality. Wow, Cross, so original. Yeah, it's still good. Shotguns are good, guys. What can I say? And so are other special weapons. And you know what makes them even better? When the other guy across from you blew his entire special load the round before, and they have no way of countering your shotgun, your fusion rifle, or any of your other special weapons. The reason why I bring this up, if you find yourself in a 3v1, as in your entire team's up, and there's only one guy left on the other team, do not go in there and waste your special ammo just to get the kill. Conserve it, guys. And that's part of that chess match in Trials. Is now, at least for me, I'm always scratching my head wondering, oh boy, does he still got special? Can I challenge? And I find myself counting the shots of my enemies just to kind of keep an idea of how much special they've used. Now, what this has also done inside of Trials is opened up to an entire array of different meta options. Primary weapons you probably have never used. I found myself using Trespasser, Necrocast, Surus Regime, Jade Rabbit, Hawkmoon, Dead Man Cell, a number of primary weapons that I haven't used in a very long time. Granted, what I may use may not be something you want to use, but I think a good resource if you want to just look at it every single weekend is Trials Report. This is a report that literally shows you the weapon breakdown for everything. But this gives you like a rough breakdown of what everyone is using. For this weekend, some of the top weapons are Prosecutor, Conditional Finality, Ammon, Summoner, Igneous, the Summoner Adept. Now, if you see some of these options, you're like, okay, Prosecutor. A lot of people are using Prosecutor. Why? Oh, because it has Keep Away and Target Lock and other perk combinations that make it disgusting. Let me type in Prosecutor as a cross review on YouTube. Oh my God. Looky there. There's the God Roll. I know I'm shamelessly plugging, but one of the things that is true about Destiny, more than any other game you have ever played, when it comes to PvP, your role is vitally important. And for PvE as well. But in PvP, there is a tangible moment where you're like, oh my God, how did that Guardian's balls find its way to my forehead? And it's because you didn't use a good rolled weapon. You went in there with some janked up stuff some weapon that you wouldn't even use in a patrol and thought you were going to win in that 1v1. It just don't happen like that. Having well-rolled weapons is vitally important. And knowing which one of those weapons to bring into trials every weekend is something that you can find out literally every Friday by just tuning into somebody playing trials. Just see with a rocket. You're like, okay, it's a close quarter map. Let me see what they're using. And perhaps you yourself can utilize what they're rocking. Now, guys, we're actually collecting a number of different archetypes that we've been playing across the board to kind of narrow down what we like the most in this current meta. We'll be putting that video together very soon. I hope you like this trials video. It ended up being way longer than we expected, but this is everything you need to know about trials in 2024. Well, fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.